been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Catherine Drake Foster. And the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is part 230. Now this is section V of a multi-part instruction. You are a chosen ambassador of the kingdom of God to reproduce heaven-born possibilities on earth. You have been appointed as a king priest, and that's non-gender specific. Authority and power have been conferred to you to release miraculous provision into every sphere of influence. Your acknowledgement of the kingdom of God within activates heaven on earth. Now in section one, we are going to look into the finishing faith of Abraham. In Romans, the fourth chapter, the 13th through the 25th verses from the King James Version said, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham nor to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So what he's saying is that what came to him was because he believed God. He had faith in God, the faith of God. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. That means that promise that Abraham received is firm and enduring from generation to generation, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So now, he is our father too because we are in Christ Jesus. And it goes on to say, as it is written, and this is the promise that God gave to Abraham. I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were so Faith does this. Faith makes the impossible the inevitable. And this next verse describes what Abraham did. Who against hope, believed in hope. So even though it was hopeless, he kept on believing because he was believing in God. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So any spoken word of God will be considered the rhema word of God, for he heard it himself. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. That means that there was no life in him to reproduce any children at that point. Yet the deadness of Sarah's wound, and she had been barren all her life, and now she's about 90 years old. And it says that Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. So he was not going back and forth with 
Yes, God will do it. No, God won't do it. Yes, God will do it. He believed God. And it says, but was strong in faith. Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded what he had promised, what God had promised him, he was able also to perform because it was God's promise to Abraham that he was receiving in the earth. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. God looked at his believing as credit to him as right standing with God. It says, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, that's you and me, to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. That means he made us to be acquitted because his shed blood. Now let's look at this so we can understand the principles behind faith. In Hebrews 11th chapter, the sixth verse from the King James Version said, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is, that God is, that he exists. He is living. He is, as it says in scripture about Jesus, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So it's all about seeking the Lord, seeking his face. Now, when you seek the presence of the Lord, the power is already there, and so is provision. Let's look in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 8th through the 12th verses, also from the King James Version, says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receiving inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. So he didn't have a GPS, but he heard the voice of God and he followed the voice of God that he believed in his heart. And it says, by faith, Abraham sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He was looking for the face that he had heard the voice of because it was so real to him. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. That means that she held on to, laid hold of the strength, and that was the dunamis power of God that caused her to conceive when she was barren and too old, even if she wasn't barren her whole life, and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. She said, God is faithful and true. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. So let's also look in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, the 17th through the 19th verses from the King James Version. It says, by faith, when Abraham was tried, that means there was a proficiency test that he had to bring Isaac into the world, but then there was a performance test that he had to have when God commanded Abraham to offer Isaac as a burnt sacrifice. So it says that he offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So it was not just any son of Abraham. It was Isaac that God said that he was a chosen heir. And it goes accounting that God is able to raise him up 
even from the dead. And even at that time, there was no one documented who was raised from the dead. He believed that God still could raise him from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. So he loved not his life unto the death. He knew that this was a total surrender to God. And what God commanded him to do, he was willing to do. He did not second guess God whatsoever. What is a recurring message we like to leave with you today? You have the crown. You wear the signet ring and you hold the scepter. People even call you king. Your seat in heavenly places awaits your arrival. In fact, it is next to Jesus Christ who was already sitting at the right hand of our heavenly father, Abba. Will you grant permission to him to transform you into a ruling king and a representing priest unto him? I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Please plan to stay tuned for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Again, that's area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Proud to be an advertiser for King's Portion Web Radio. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section two, and we will be addressing the founding faith of Abraham, how he received his start. And this is from Genesis, the 12th chapter, the first through the third verses from the King James Version. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So that includes you because when we are in Christ, we are part of Abraham's seed. That means that God blessed us to be a blessing. And those who bless us, he will bless. And those who curse us, he will curse. Because when you think of blessing, think of this, that it is the power to prosper. And then in the curse means in power to fail. In Genesis, the 15th chapter, the first through the six verses from the King James Version says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. So he's saying that to us too, that he is our protection, our source of protection, as well as we can receive favor of the Lord. And Abram said, Lord God, what would thou give me seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. What Abraham was asking God was joined to God's provision so that he could receive at the highest level possible. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This is not thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. So now we know that God was going to still use Abraham 
And this was after he was 75 years old, giving birth to his first child. And he brought him forth abroad and says, this is God saying to Abraham, look now toward heaven and tell the stars what he's saying. Count the stars. He said, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And Abram believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness because it was by faith. Let's also look in Genesis 16th chapter, the first through the 15th verse from the King James Version. It says, now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. She said, God is holding out on me. While that is really not the case, God is always testing our heart, either for the proficiency test or the performance test. And this would be the proficiency test. What will we do when we have a promise? Will we do something that we want to do? Or we will inquire of God to get more information on what we should be doing from his perspective. And she continues, I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It shall be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan. That means he was now 85 years old. And Sarah gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. So now Abraham has two wives. And Abraham went into Hagar and she conceived. And her mistress was despised in her eyes. That means that Hagar lightly esteemed Sarai. And Sarai said to Abram, my wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, behold, thy maid is in thine hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, that means she oppressed her and afflicted her, Sarai made Hagar flee from her face. And the angel of the Lord found Hagar by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence cometh thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself unto her hands. And the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, thou art with child and shalt bear a son and thou shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard thy affliction, and he shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me for she said have i also here looked after him that seeth me what she's saying is that now i'm receiving god's vision not her own because her own wanted to run away wherefore the well was called birla hero a behold it is between kadesh and the red and hagar bear Abram a son 
and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. So now you could see that this was a form of bringing in the works of the flesh, not the works of the spirit, but the works of the flesh, because we are to live in the spirit and be led by the spirit. But in this case, this is how the own will of human flesh tries to override the will of our father, his purposes for us, his plan and his path for us. On our program today, you're going to enjoy the music of Trey McLaughlin as he presents In Awe of You. See, there is a worship that only belongs to God, not with anyone else, no matter who they are. God must be first in our life if we're saying we're worshiping him. For we should be in awe of the Lord at all times where we're bowing our hearts before him in spirit and in truth. So let's hear in awe of you, Trey McLaughlin, and I'll be right back.
visit us on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section three. And we will be addressing the fortifying faith of Abraham. In Genesis, the 17th chapter, the first to the 22nd verses from the King James Version, it says, And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, so he was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly now this is when abraham only had one son and it happened to be ishmael so he haven't even had the promised son yet and abram fell on his face he fell down to worship god and god talked with him saying as for me behold my covenant is with thee he says my pledge is with you my alliance is with you and thou shall be a father of many nations neither shall thy name any more be called abram which is exalted father but thy name shall be abraham for a father of many nations have i made thee now this was only with one son and this was not the promised son yet and this is God's promise. So God sees it already done. He says, for father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations come of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Why? Because he saw Jesus in Abraham's, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant that means that there is no end to the covenant that god has made with us and he says to be a god unto thee and to thy seed after thee god desires to be a god unto us and that is a pledge you keep because of abraham and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee, which includes you and me, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, thou shalt keep my covenant therefore. That means observe it guard it celebrate it thou and thy seed after thee in their generation so that means we are supposed to observe the covenant we have with god guard it and celebrate it as well he says this is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee every man child among you shall be circumcised now they did the circumcision physically so they were cutting off a part of the foreskin now when we become christians that moment that we give our heart to the lord and it says old things are passed away and behold all things are new that we are renouncing the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and our former life that we had and accepting our new life in Christ, that shows our commitment and our covenant with God to keep what he has said. But in this case, theirs was physical. He says, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. So you know that while there's was physical circumcision ours would be supernatural and and spiritual 
and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you every man child in your generations he that is born in your house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised his soul shall be cut off from his people he has broken my covenant that means there was a violation that he would not be a part of the covenant and god said unto abraham as for sarai thy wife thou shalt not call her name sarai but sarah shall her name be and i will bless her and give thee a son also of her yea i will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations kings of people shall be of her then abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart shall a son be born unto thee that is a hundred years old and shall sarah that is ninety years old bear so this way is showing that he was actually fallen on his face but he was mocking god in his heart and this is what abraham continued to say unto god oh that ishmael might live before thee he was trying to give god an option to the good acceptable perfect will of god and god said sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed and thou shalt call his name isaac and i will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him and as for ishmael i have heard thee behold i have blessed him and i will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. That's showing that there was a due season, there was a Kairos time. That is when the time meets the opportunity that God has set. And he left off talking with him and God went up from Abraham. See, it's all important for us to have the vision of God. So we're working with God because we are partnered with him because we have an everlasting covenant that he'll always cover us with his favor and protection. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. I was just standing there basking in the sun and all of a sudden, I was soaking wet. There wasn't a sign in the sky, so I was unprepared without an umbrella. But in the end, it just didn't matter. I loved every minute of it. I knew I was living under open heavens. It really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing, not a dry spot. This is Fran the Fan of H-D-O-R. Uh-oh, here comes the rain again. been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Thanks for staying tuned to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section four. And we will be addressing the flourishing faith of Abraham. We're going to look in Genesis, the 18th chapter, the first through the 15th verses from the King James Version. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself 
toward the ground. So now he's showing again his worship toward him. But listen to this and even this whole scripture where you'll find that even though he is 99 years old, he is running. He is hasting toward it. Why? Because when we spend time with God, it changes everything. Even our youth is renewed and said, my Lord, if not have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray thee, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that, ye may pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, do so as thou have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cake upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it to a young man and he haste to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. And they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. He is keeping his promise no matter how long it has been. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah was old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women, which means that she had not even any menstruation. So she couldn't have any children and both were too old. They would have been considered barren even if she had. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? And my Lord being old also, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. See, God is the only one that can see us from the inside out and want to make sure that our heart has to be there where we are believing him. So you want to have accountability partner to help you to know that you're not in faith. And that's what happened here because she was in disbelief saying in herself that it was already impossible for her to have the baby. But when you move into unbelief you're saying you don't even believe God and that's what she was doing because she was saying surety that means it's a guarantee because when you're dealing with a covenant with God it is now a guarantee of his promises to you then it says then Sarah denied saying I laugh not for she was afraid and he said nay but thou did laugh because you have to know this, that God sees our heart and even what we say. So you want to make sure that when it comes to him, that we allow him to have that part, all of us, spirit, soul, and body, and our heart, that we can always believe the best. Now on our program today, you're going to enjoy the music again of Trey McLaughlin as he shares, I will praise. So our Stance is always, I will praise the Lord. Even when there is a hopeless situation, I will praise the Lord. That we're guarding our heart. We're guarding our mouth. We're saying, I will praise the Lord. For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. That he is God and God forever. He is good and doeth good. 
all the time and he will never withhold from me. So let's hear, I will praise Trey McLaughlin and I'll be right back. There are times when I feel all alone in this life So confused, walking blind, going out of my mind But you said you'd never leave me all alone so oh, even though I feel the hope is gone So confused Walking blind But you said you And again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is part five. And we will be addressing the fixed faith of Abraham in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, the first through the 18th verses from the King James Version. This is showing that 
Isaac have already been born, been circumcised and everything. And this is what happened when God comes to him. And it says it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. That means he put him to the proof. That means he gave him a performance test to see if he could really say he had the faith of God, that he really believed God would keep his promises. And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou love, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I would tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Now, God had just said to offer Isaac as a burnt offering. But this is what Abraham said, that we are going to worship and return to you because he figured that if God told him to offer him up and he is his seed, that he was going to raise him up from the dead if he died and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together and Isaac spake unto his father Abraham and said my father and he said here I am my son and he said behold the fire and the wood but where is a lamb for a burnt offering? So he, even Isaac didn't know God's plan at that point. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So now he's still keeping the promise through the proficiency test that he knew that he had received Isaac. Now he's doing the performance test that he's going to keep Isaac. And they came to the place which God told them of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And even this, you can see the strength of Abraham because Isaac was not a little boy. He was a young man. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou feareth God, that is having the fear of the Lord, being reverent before him, you're honoring him so much that you will humble yourself before him, seeing thou have not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Abraham kept all the options open except for offering his son at that point. He made sure that he was coming home with Isaac because he was the seed that God confirmed as the heir. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. That means that God will provide. God is the provider. And then in one translation said, 
that God will see to it. And as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by thyself have I sworn, said the Lord, this is a covenant. For because thou have done this thing and have not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou have obeyed my voice. That's what God said to Abraham. Now let's look at Abraham in Genesis, the 24th chapter, the first verse. And it says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And God had blessed Abraham in all things. Let that be your testimony that you are preparing to live long and live strong. And then in Genesis, the 25th chapter, the 7th and 8th verse from the King James Version, it says, And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived a hundred three score and 15 years. That's 175 years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man full of years and was gathered to his people. So let that be your testimony that God blessed you in all things, but it was because of faith. But you may say that how do you do this? Well, the first start is Worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth by you giving your heart to the Lord if you have not done so far. Why don't you say this prayer after me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I recognize I need to be saved. And Jesus is the only way. He is the Savior of the world. And I want him to be my Savior too. I ask you to forgive me of all the transgressions every sin and that you impute not any iniquity upon me nor my bloodline back to Adam but that I am forgiven because of the blood of Jesus redeemed me and I believe when I ask you to come into my heart that that is a reality so Jesus come into my heart be the Lord and Savior of my life I recognize that old things have passed away and behold all things are new and now i'm the newest creation in the body of christ in jesus name i pray amen thank you jesus now if you said that prayer why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com that's info at kingsportionlive.com and we'll send you some encouragement along the way now let's return to the main portions of king's portion live after this message from our sponsor we invite you to Visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of our program today, which bears the theme, the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section six, and we will be addressing following the faith of Abraham. That is having finishing faith, founding faith, fortifying faith, flourishing faith, and fixed faith. Let's begin with Romans, the fifth chapter, the second verse from the voice translation, it says, Jesus leads us into a place of radical grace where we are able to celebrate the hope of experiencing God's glory. Let's also look in Ephesians, the third chapter, the 12th verse from the voice translation it says, 
His faithfulness to God, that is Jesus' faithfulness to God, has made it possible for us to have the courage we need and the ability to approach the Father confidently. Let's also look in Galatians, the third chapter, the 13th and 14th verses from the King James Version. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. And that is those who are not of the Jewish descent, because it is then by faith, it is made promise, it is by grace, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, the Holy Spirit. Then in Galatians, the third chapter, the 26th through the 29th verses from the King James Version, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, for as many of you have have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus and if you be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that's joined to the promise of God. So now this is what our faith by grace does for us. It admits us into the family of God when we become children of God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So let's listen to Hebrews 11 chapter, the 13th verse from the King James Version. It says, these all died in faith not having received the promises. So they didn't receive all the promises God had for them. And this verse tells us how important we follow what faith commands. And it says, but having received them from afar, that means they had a vision of it. They had God's vision for them, what they should have. They were persuaded of them. They knew for surety that it was a guarantee that it was theirs and they embraced them. They made room for them. See, there's one thing when you're saying you're believing something, but when you begin to make room for the promise, that makes sure that you have received it unto yourself as you are owning it. And it says, and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. What they were saying is that this is not a home on earth, but they saw another home and it was a heavenly home because they were looking for God and because they were looking for God and their confession sealed that they were planning to see him even in the heavenlies. They did not finish because of what they kept confessing out of their mouth what they were confessing they really believed in their heart let's look in hebrews the sixth chapter the 11th through the 20th verse from the king james version it says and we desire that every one of you shew the same diligence to the same assurance of a hope unto the end that abraham did he hoped against hope that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So it's showing us we need to have faith in God and faith in what he has said to us and patience. Patience is our composure to master that stage so that we can receive the promises of God. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater. God swore by himself saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after Abraham patiently endured, he obtained the promise for men 
verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife wherein god willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for god to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, wherefore the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So this is when you want to look at about God. It's impossible for God to lie. That does not mean that he can lie sometime or you can believe him sometime. God is the absolute truth that you can always absolutely trust. So it is impossible for him to lie. He gave us a promise. So when you think of somebody giving you a promise that that was sure, he went beyond giving us the promise by vowing the promise and now we have a vow promise of God that if he doesn't do what he said he was going to do he would have to die well he is not going to stop being himself he is always going to be true to who he really is so he gives us a hope that is sure that is steadfast that is undisputable and unwavering just like he is and then we have our great high priest jesus who is at the throne of grace who is waiting for us to come to find the grace and mercy that we need so we can hope against hope and see our faith take us to the end now in romans the 15th chapter the 13th verse from the King James Version says, Now the God of hope for you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So you see the Holy Spirit helps us keep believing because now we have the God of hope filling us and cramming us with all joy, with all peace in the state of even while we are believing no matter if it's longer than we want to wait we can still wait in faith because we have holy spirit who has the fruit of joy the fruit of faith the fruit of peace so we can keep believing then you can see that we'll have the faith that makes the impossible, the inevitable. How we like to close the program today. Remember this and let this be your invocation to our Heavenly Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I thank you for the days of heaven upon the earth. I believe to receive the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ that is generated to and he shall reign forever and ever for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever in Jesus name amen this is Catherine Joy Foster for King's Portion where we speak to the royal blood in you you have been listening to the King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster today's podcast is available for download Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.